I can't take a heart that's broke making over again. But I know a man who can. I can't take a soul. Well, to God be the glory, great things he hath done. He loves the world that he gave us his son. His son yielded his life on atonement for sin. And he opens the life gates that all may go in. All right, getting my Facebook device set up. <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. What a wonderful day. Thursday should have been the doctor's hour, the doctor's day. But where is the doctor? Well, Dr. Seam cannot leave surgery today. Uh, the commitments there. So, I just happened to be passing through rushing from some other place to get here to share with you to ensure that we do not carry a rebroadcast i rather when a live human person sits here and speak to you and you can interact and of course especially to our telephone lines now Operating, you can make a call and share your thoughts, your views, request a prayer, and all of that. So don't worry about me not having on my wedding garments today. You know the text about the man who was found in a wedding feast. He was on uninvited guests, and for some reason he showed up at the wedding feast. And the good man of the house came and asked him, Friend, <laughs> how on earth did you get in here not having on your wedding garments? Oh, it was rough for him because they, they thrust him out. They threw him out. What do we say? Yeah. No wedding garment, no entrance. So you're accustomed to the wedding garments of the tie and the jacket and the all kinds of stuff and that's wonderful to be as presentable as we can but i said in fasting on yesterday ministering that we could be so very well deported with all the matching colors and everything in place dressed to the tea and someone would look at us and say, oh, that's a wonderful person based on the outward appearance. And God looks on such person and said, oh, no, there's nothing good about that person because the heart is corrupt. Wow. And what is in the heart comes out after a while. So. This is a day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Carlton, under whatever circumstance. So I'm happy to be here with you sharing. Okay. Reminding you that we meet on Friday night for Shut In With God. A very unusual, unique, special type of prayer meeting. No moderator, no instrument, no music, no, no, not even lights, no lights in the sanctuary. We just really shut in with God, no distraction. And this Friday was going to be a very special one, I suppose, third in the series. We did say we had one for the Father, one for the Son. Friday night will be for the Holy Spirit. But all of us who need another touch, a fresh touch, 
need baptism of the Holy Spirit will come with open hearts. So we're going to do some fasting on tomorrow. Oh yeah, do a little fasting. Fast the meal, fast both, fast the day. Because man shall not live by bread alone. He needs the word of God. <laughs> Somebody say I'm looking great. <laughs> What's looking great about me today? I'll leave you nameless. Well, let's see you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Just a different look. Was not planned. So I just dropped in. Sunday morning, 7 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And then at 6, 6 p.m., very special, very special evening for everybody. You and your family, your friends, your co-worker, your brethren, come on out. Jamaica 60 celebration. It's going to be a great evening, Sunday evening. Be here early so you can get a good upfront seat. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you. And I don't think there's any entrance fee or charge. No. But I think you may be, an offering will be collected, I suppose, to assist in covering expenses. Bless you. And we did say on August the 28th, the last Sunday, we'll only have one morning service, and that's the 7 o'clock service. And, of course, the evening service at 6.30. So no, no 10 a.m. service on the 28th, 7 o'clock. And I need all of my brethren to come out to the sand yard. Especially those I've not seen in a long time. I need you to come on out. Well, Bishop, what's that about? Well, I don't even know all of it myself, but we'll see. Hope to see you. All right. This week's been a busy one like all the others have been for us. Convention in many churches. We have gone to three conventions since Sunday. Last night we were in Maypen, Love Lane, Bishop Carlton Russell. Mm, wonderful service there. We try to carry it on the YouTube channel. Of course, the quality was not very great because of the, can I say, poor lighting and, and all of that. But uh, those of you who viewed, I saw uh, almost 200 of you at one time viewing. So we bless the Lord. Let us pray. Father, bless us we, today as we speak to your people through your word. The words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts ought to be acceptable in your sight. So will you sanctify our hearts and sanctify our lips so indeed that which is conceived and that which proceed will be acceptable in your sight. Touch your servant once again. Pour fresh oil upon me as I seek to be your voice and your arms, O oh God. Touch the equipment that I used to facilitate this broadcast. Touch the personnel who man those equipment. Touch the airwaves. Touch the heart and soul and mind and body of every person in my audience. And grant, O oh Lord, that they will receive a blessing today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we see those prayer requests you're putting on there. Well, quite a few people telling me I'm looking good, looking great. Why are you doing that to me? <laughs> All right. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> psalm 91. Do you know that psalm? Most people do. He that dwelleth in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 
Thou shalt not be afraid of the hour that flyeth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eye shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is thy refuge, even the most high, thine habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. My goodness. What a powerful psalm. No plague shall come nigh your dwelling. Why? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt shred upon the lion and adder, the young lion and dragon, you shall trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me. I will answer him. I will deliver him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The happy state of the godly. The psalm that speaks to protection and security. And that's what we want to talk about a little today. Okay, Marjorie, we will certainly back you up tonight. I promise you, I'll talk to my father for you <laughs> I will yes I will security and protection those two words and definitions to both are somewhat similar but different in some ways security and protection this psalm is one that is said by many people going to bed at night maybe wake up in the morning before they enter upon the shores of the day the uncertainty that always lie around the conscious God-fearing Bible-believing person will read this psalm Psalm 46 Psalm 35 and some of those psalms that speak to security and protection that our heavenly father promises to give to those who trust him and nothing is wrong with that because i think it is psalm 20 and verse 7 it said some people will trust the chariots and some will trust the horses that's their choice but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They who trust the chariots and the horses are brought down and are fallen. But we who trust the name of the Lord are risen and stand upright. That's wonderful. So we do not fuss with anyone or, and I use the term fight with anyone, I mean fight with words. We don't do that. God has made us free moral agents. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and whilst we do not necessarily agree with some choices that people make in life, and we too have the right not to agree. Yeah. It's just a matter of God has made us that way. So whilst we might not necessarily subscribe to people's some people's choices, but they have the right to do so. God allowed them to do so. So you want to continue to trust the chariots? Keep on trusting. You want to continue to trust the horses? Keep on trusting. But we who trust the Lord would say to you, it is vain to trust the chariots and the horses of this age and time, of this world. Put your trust in God. I think that's a series of messages we carried on the radio uh, this week, yeah, since last week into this week, trust God now more than ever. All right, so in Christ we have security 
in Christ we have protection. There is no question about that. Security speaks of the act, the act of protecting or the state of being protected. Preservation from injury, preservation from harm, and all the other ills of our time. You are protected from them. You have protection. Protection. Security speaks of, among other things, freedom from danger, freedom from risk, freedom from certain cares of life, freedom from anxiety. And there's a definition that I looked up in, in, in dictionary.com. I love this definition. It speaks of persons who are operating in a well-founded confidence. Operate in a well-founded confidence is to know that you are almost insulated by the Almighty from some of those things. So today you can operate in a well Founded confidence. Confidence. Paul said to the brethren, he said, do not cast away your confidence. Is that Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 35? I think maybe that's where it is. He says, do not cast away your confidence because it has great recompense of reward. All right, I told you that I'm just passing through, but I got it right. That's the Holy Spirit. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For you have, for you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. All right, so... The whole question of insecurity doesn't come to us as believers because we have confidence in heaven's security, God's security plan, and God's security apparatus. They have never failed. We spoke yesterday in the fasting service and mentioned the might and the power of just one angel one angel, I think it is, it is in Isaiah chapter 37, yeah. One angel, Sennacherib, a terrible king, terrible king. And God wanted to liquidate him and liquidate his people. Well, God didn't kill him. His two sons killed him. The two sons fell upon him while he was worshipping his idol. Why some things happen? Let, let me see if I find it and read something from there for you. Uh, I think I said Isaiah chapter 37, someplace there. I'm just flowing with this. Yeah, Ezekiah, Sennacherib. What's the verse now? But the angel of the Lord was against him. And God released one angel. It's a long chapter. So it'll take me some time to find that particular verse. But one angel, some of you could tell me the verse. Look at, look at it, please. One angel was released again. Sennacherib. And destroyed 185,000 men. Lay flat. That's way beyond... Samson with the jawbone of an ass. He slew a thousand Philistines under the power of God. This one angel, 185,000 lay flat. So God's angels assigned to watch over his people, as we see here in Psalm 91, is for real. It's for real. So when we talk about God's security, and God's protection in Christ, it is for real. He who dwells in the sacred place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So what it says there, you have a divine overshadowing presence. Divine overshadowing presence. That's the presence of Almighty God. In the Old Testament time, when Israel traveled through their journey through the wilderness, God stood with them in a pillar of cloud by day. And by night, he stood with them in a pillar of fire. And cloud by night, by day, fire by night was for their protection. And as just as all the cloud moves, the people would move. So that's what it is. Trust God for his security and for his protection plan. These days we have all kinds of Isaiah 37 and verse 38. Well, let me look for that now. My wonderful workers are working with me. Great. Is it verse 38? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then the angel of the Lord went forth and smote in the camp of the Assyrians. A a hundred and four score and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpse. Thank you, Lorna. You're wonderful. Appreciate it, okay? One hundred and eighty-five thousand. All right, God slew dead corpse. So trust God secured the plan. I was about saying that in the age and time in which we live, because of crime and violence, evil men, security and protection become high priority. And you, can't, you cannot blame persons for want, wanting to pr protect their person. One life you have to live, we have to live on this earth, there's an afterlife, okay? Life after death. So you try to ensure that you be here to do the best you can and you don't carelessly give away your life that's the reason we have our houses are like prisons today visited with someone in a certain upscale community sometimes earlier this month and that person's premises the house is grilled both in and out did you hear that double grills Grill in and out, or out and in. <laughs> I said, my God, if something were to go wrong at night, God suffer it not. And they have to rescue that person. The fire department would have a hard time. So grills have become the order of the day. Do you use grills there in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands? <laughs> She says, I'm nicely decked out. All right. I'm asking you, do you use grills on your windows and doors there in St. Thomas, U.S. Virgin Islands? In Jamaica, we are big on grills. Grills. Guard dogs. Got to be careful. You go to people's gates and you see big sign, beware of dogs. We are big on guns too. Oh, both legal and illegal. So grills, guard dogs, guns. <laughs> Do not take much chance with anyone these days because many people are harmed with their weapon, both males and females. Lots of Jamaican women are carrying the thing. They got me thing for me, they got me thing for me. Yeah, got the thing for me, <laughs> not the Bible. <laughs> Brother Lester, they got a thing for them. I'm surprised to know that so many of so many women are harmed, you know. So grills and dogs and guns and alarm systems and bodyguard and car tracking devices, those who provide or try to provide physical security in those senses, <laughs> they are in big business. Oh, you don't use grills in St. Thomas Virgin. You depend on the neighbors. 
Well, you have wonderful neighbors over there. To God be the glory. Did you see that? Yeah. So we, 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 we look to all of these things because we want to protect, we want to secure our person, our properties, our possessions, our families. Yeah. There's a particular gentleman who says he needs, he needs a gun to protect his family. He personally told me that. He needs a gun to protect his family. Well, I can't, I can't say, you know, people should not make their choices. But you know like I know. Oh, no, I'm sorry to say this, but I'm going to say it. Many people died with their weapons on them. Many people were dispossessed of their weapons, killed and dispossessed. Many had no time to pull their weapon. So the harm of flesh, whatever is the harm of flesh, it can fail you. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost on that. Whatever is the arm of flesh, the grills, the guard dogs, the guns, the alarm system, the personal bodyguard, the, all of the devices, whatever is an arm of flesh, it can fail you. Because it was created by human being. And whatever is created by human being is not foolproof. Oh, no. But hear me, friend. And I know, I don't know how you're going, you're going to take this today. Hear me. And you, you have to have faith to accept and believe what I'm saying right now. Because when God says, I'll give my angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. I happen to believe that. Yeah, I believe that. And nobody... Absolutely nobody can breach God's security method or device or agents. You can't breach it. You can't fight an angel and win. Oh, no, you can't do that. As a matter of fact, you can't physically see them. They, are. they can be invisible beings fighting you out of space. You can't. You can't breach God's security plan, God's security devices. No, you can't do that. So the psalmist is correct. If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and you will say, say it when you wake up in the morning. Say it when you're going to bed at night. Say it when you're going out and you're coming in. What should you say? The Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. So Bishop, does that mean you should not grill your house? No, I didn't say that. Does it mean that you should not have your dogs? I didn't I say that. Did it, does it mean that you shouldn't get your thing? And I did not say that. Do anything you want to do. But I'm telling you, they all can fail you. But those who trust in the Lord, and are operating, I love this word, these words, operating in well-founded confidence. And that well-founded confidence can be found nowhere but in the Almighty God. Oh, praise God. Somebody help me praise him there. Holy Ghost is here. That well-founded confidence is only to be found in the Lord Jesus Christ and in his protection plan. So surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. We are talking about in God, you have hiding place, you have fortress, you have deliverance, you have preservation, and whatever it is that come against you, God will fight the battle for you. Oh, yeah. Do you think we are only fighting physical forces? Paul says, brethren, let me tell you straight up. You, your fight is not just against, well, it's not against flesh and blood. It is against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Your guns can't stop demons. Well, you think your dogs can? No, your dog can't stop demon either. Oh, no. Grills can't stop demons. Demons are incorporeal being. They can go through walls. They don't need any opening door or window to go through. My God, they are disembodied spirits. And that's our greatest fight these days. So many people are in disarray because they can't do this, they can't do that for themselves, they can't do the other. Well, trust God. Trust the Almighty God. When all around my soul give way, he then is all my open state. You know, there is a... In the United Nations, I don't know much about it, but I, what I say I know is true. In the United Nations, there's a body called the Security Council. Do you not know that? Yeah. The Security Council in the United Nations consisting of some, some permanent members. Exact number, I don't remember. Maybe five permanent members and member nations. You have maybe 10 rotating member nations in the United Nations Security Council. And their concern is primarily the preservation of world security. Yeah. Security Council in the United Nations. United Nations. Yeah. They want to preserve world security, world peace, world protection. And what do some of them do? They harm themselves to the T, building up weapons of mass destruction. You know, you don't, you don't build up those kind of armory mass destruction weapon and at the same time say that you're trying to secure world peace. But Isaiah says there's no peace to the wicked. No peace to the wicked, said the Lord. So what we should be looking at is to put down the weapons. Yeah. Lay them down. Fifteen members, okay? Thank you. Lay down the weapons and begin to return incrementally, slowly but surely to God's order. Love your neighbor as yourself. Dear God, every war ceased right there. Do unto others as you would that they do unto you. Every conflict ceased right there. Yeah. And there's no way Russia would be doing to Ukraine what they are doing now. And there's no way the other nations would be threatening others as they are now doing. No. No. Because each would see the other as my brother, as my sister. I saw a news coming out of Florida the other day. Well, just yesterday. That they are looking seriously at trying to put a dent on the guns that are flowing from the U.S. into the Caribbean. And they named a particular country that is big on buying those arms from the U.S. I leave that country nameless. Not too far from us either in Jamaica. They're always in turmoil, always in war, always in insurrection against government, against constituted authorities. So they say they are looking at putting a dent on it to stop the flow of those guns because they flow into that Caribbean country and then they, in turn, my God, send them to many other countries. What we say in Jamaica, gun for drugs, yeah, gun for drugs, etc. Well, you know where I'm going. So we don't bring about peace and security by building up weapons of mass destruction. We secure peace and security for everybody by returning to the order of 
the old book. They said I preached it the other day and made this statement that you must get your new look from the old book. Get your new look from the old book. So the psalmist David was messing around with words here. Not messing around with words. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted that noonday. God's protection plan, God's security plan is comprehensive. My wife, Dr. Petrova, she was Sister Ichman then, and she had witness to this. Coming from prayer meeting many years ago, she wasn't married then. Coming from prayer meeting herself and another young church sister. Young ladies. Maybe they were still in their teens, yeah. Had to be in their teens, mid-teens. Two gunmen held them up. Gunmen, real gunmen. And the anointing of God came upon those two anointed Holy Ghost-filled young ladies. And heaven just overshadowed them and took over. And heaven began to speak through them. God just shut down all of earth and just opened up heaven inside of them. And heaven began to speak some language. And when the gunmen heard heaven began to speak, the gunmen took off like thieves and robbers. Indeed, that's who they were. And God would so have it that they proved that it was a toy gun or a play gun. When they, those days, Portmore was not like it is today. Portmore is a massive expanse of houses those days a lot of shrubs and bushes and all kinds of stuff around the place when the guys run into the bush like thieves they fire two shots but they were only shooting in the air because god had already covered his children the trover each man yeah and another little sister so you, you, you may not understand it, but this thing is real. And you would have heard many testimonies, I suppose, from various ones of divine supernatural intervention at critical times. So I'm trying to tell you, what are you trying to say, Bishop? I'm really trying. I'm really trying hard to let you know that the grills and the guard dogs and the guns and the alarm system and the bodyguard and the everything physical that we do do them if you can but do not put ultimate trust in them put your trust in god's security and god's protection plan but it cannot fail did i say it cannot fail it cannot fail oh praise the lord okay so Psalm 91 is telling us loud and clear. The psalmist said, A thousand shall fall at your side. Ten thousand will come at your right hand. But it can't touch you. It cannot touch you. Why? Surrounded by angels. <laughs> Surrounded by God. Surrounded by angels. Surrounded by God. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. God's protection and security plan is a master plan. Absolutely, says Sister Yvette. Yeah, absolutely. How many grills have they cut off and go in and rob and rape and shoot? Yeah. How many doors have they kicked in? How many businessmen die with their guns in their waist or wherever they have them? Never get a chance to draw it. How many guard dogs have been poisoned and dropped dead? How many car alarm device systems have been dis dismantled 
because these criminals they have the technology they know what to do but trust god trust god's security plan i'm saying this to somebody who feel somewhat vulnerable yes it's coming straight to me now you feel somewhat vulnerable and you're meditating some thoughts as to what you might need to do to protect yourself huh. wow gunman run yeah run like a thief you are meditating some thought as to what you might need to do to protect yourself i am saying to you my brother my sister my friend whatever you choose to do which is legal legal yeah but make sure you do not put ultimate trust in any of those things but put ultimate trust in God. Thousand at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. Only with your eyes will you see. Be all and see the reward of the wicked. All right. So the old question as to. Whether or not the subject of security has become. I and the agenda of nation is a no brainer. Our Prime Minister spoke recently about investment that his government has made. All in security devices for the nation. He spoke of the, the boats for the Marine Police. He spoke of the, 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 the training in technology. He spoke of the here, here wing, here craft. So sea borders and air and land, land, sea and air. The most honorable prime minister said we have put in place the necessary equipment and the personnel have been trained to man those equipment. But when thou passes through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle up on you. Isaiah 43 and verse 2. So says Exhorter Apollenon Garden. He speaks from this pulpit too. Yeah, that's it. So whatever you're going to encounter in life, God is able, more than able to see you through. I shared a story some times ago, you know, and some of you believe it. I hope everybody believed it. Because we don't, we don't speak fables and tell lies. And, no, no. We speak the truth and nothing but the truth. But I realize the truth sometimes, it causes offense. Yeah. I'm trying to find out if there's a scripture that says not every truth to be known are to be told. I've heard that said many, many times over my lifetime. Somebody could tell me. But I'll check it out. Not every truth to be known are not every truth to be told. Is that a scripture? I don't know at this point, but I'll check it out. But I say that some truth, when they are told, when they are known, they cause serious offense. And this morning I was just thinking about it that, you know, we can, we can doctor facts. Yeah, we can doctor facts. Facts can be changed. Uh, accountants can change figures but truth is eternal you can't do nothing about the truth I don't care what you do the truth is going to remain the truth so we can doctor the figures doctor the facts alter facts here and there here and there facts versus truth truth is eternal somebody should write that down yeah Get it in your psyche. Truth is eternal. Avoid it now. It's going to surface, if not in time, in eternity. If not in this world, in the world to come. Wow. All right. So the psalmist says what he says in number, number 91. So I made the point that there's no question as to whether or not 
the subject of world security has become high on the agenda of nations. Everyone, developed nations, developing nations, whatever they are, they all have security. Companies, corporations, individual, personal for you, your family, yeah. We can't give away everything, okay? But man in his quest to provide security and protection, he has done a lot of things. He wants to ensure that he is safe, he is secure, he is protected. But oh my God, the church will say, I am overshadowed by his boundless love. And I have protection from my Lord above. Jesus walks beside me every passing day and I know he'll guide me all the way, all the way. If you were to know, and I hope we will not, the untold sums, not million now, not billions now, but trillions, the untold trillions that are being spent on trying to secure, trying to bring about security. Trillions across the nations of the world are being spent to buy all kinds of armory and all kinds of weapons and all kinds of this. And whilst that is being done, multiplied millions are dying every day of starvation can't get food to eat and clean water to drink because our priorities are not in order. Yeah, we are not set right. I return to something I said earlier. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would they do unto you. That's it. Simple law of the scriptures, the most basic, if we were to apply them to our lives as individuals, as families, as communities, as a nation, we would not have the kind of road debts that we have. Over 300 now. Can you imagine? In little Jamaica. My goodness. We are just at the eighth month of the year. And over 300 persons died as a result of motor vehicle collision on our roads. Yeah. Over 900 have been murdered brutally by the cruel heart of men. And I don't have to go into any graphic details. You know them. Jesus. We need divine protection from on, from on high. So all of these things and manufacturing companies over the world are having a field day as they manufacture all kind of metal detector, electrical control, electrically controlled doors, anti-theft devices, surveillance cameras, bulletproof vests and bulletproof automobiles high tech alarm system, high bred guard dogs, and an abundance of security firms. In Jamaica today, we have more uh, security firms. Well, more persons serving in the security firms than are in the traditional security forces. JDF and JCF. Yeah, we have more men and women serving in security for, for places as security guards. That's what I mean. Security guards outnumber the JCF and the JDF combined. Yes, the number of security companies we have today. Dear God, all of these things. And I spoke about the legal, legal and illegal guns. Brings armored vehicle, those carriers, 
And some of those things now lead to skyrocketed insurance policies. So people are benefit. People have been benefiting because of societal evil. Yes, they are making big money because evil is on the land. Bishop have never quite heard it like that. Well, you hear, you hear it today. Yeah. Insurance companies are making big buck to insure all of these things. Whatever is insured. They have all types of insurance policies now for your motor vehicle. I heard a new one announced the other day. I would even try to say what it is. Making big bucks. The list goes on and on. And this suggests that mankind feels and he knows that he is insecure. That's the bottom line. He doesn't just think it or feel that way. He knows that he's insecure. There is an amount of vulnerability to every man. So he tries to contrive all the physical things to protect himself, to give himself security and protection. The psalm, he says, mm. he shall give his angels charge over thee. Psalm 91 and verse 11, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So, you have divine protection. God is a refuge. You have ministering angels. And I want to maybe say something even more powerful than that. You have immunity from certain evil. <laughs> immunity. A lot of vaccines are being toted these days. Vaccine for this, vaccine for that, vaccine for the other. Because they want to build the immune system against certain viruses. And ain't nothing is wrong with that. Vaccine have been around a long time. It all depends on your take on it, my take on it, and whatever. But all the immunity that we can, we supposedly get from whatever, still doesn't remove the vulnerability in, in, in totality from any human being. No, it doesn't. Only God. Somebody shout, only God. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil, saith Telma. But God is with me. That's it. We want you to do what you need to do physically. I'm not saying you should not. What I'm saying, ultimately, you must trust God. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him, saith God. I will set him on high because he has known my name. I want to thank God for the confidence. <laughs> Donald Witter, behave yourself. Don't you talk <laughs> like that. <laughs> my goodness, you're, too, you're being too kind to me. You're being too generous to me. I won't tell you what was on the YouTube channel a while ago, okay? <laughs> All right. No comment, sir. <laughs> wow. Only God. Only God. Only God. Only God. Only God. Yeah. So trust him. JPS. Jamaica Public Service. JPS. Jamaica Public Service. JPS. Jesus provides security. Jesus provides security. Jesus provides security. Yeah, JPS. Won't you trust him today? My time is gone and I'm just getting ready to start. Oh my goodness. Well, let me thank you for sharing this presentation with me today. Should have been the doctor's hour, like I said. Uh, doctor could make it today, so I just slip in here, rush in here from some place and share with you from my heart, letting you know that ultimate 
protection and security is only to be found in he who has declared, huh, oh glory to God, that the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. And we stand in agreement with him today. Stacy, what do you agree with Donald about? <laughs> Please mark your calendar for the big, big, big one. Yeah. 4th of January, 2023, the Lord tarries. The big, big, big one at the big place. I'll say more. Plan to be with us in Jamaica. Plan to get the day off. To be, a, <laughs> to be a part of what God will be doing. Okay, so we meet tonight, brethren. Power of faith, brethren. Portmore, we meet at 6 o'clock, lockdown. Shut in with God for two and a half hours. Many are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit if you apply yourself sufficiently. Many are going to receive special anointing from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Many are going to have spiritual gifts activated in you as we shut in with God. Friday evening, tomorrow, 6 o'clock to 8.30. Sunday morning, 7 o'clock and 10 a.m. 6 p.m. You don't want to miss being here at 6 p.m. on Sunday evening. God bless you, everybody. 28th of August, last Sunday, one morning service only. The seven o'clock service and it's intended to bring all of my brethren together for what bishop well come and see come and hear come and feel come and you will see come and you will hear come and you will feel well bishop i can see and hear and feel from my television at home no that's not the place we want you once you can physically make it to the place of worship, be here. We have seats for you, for everybody. God bless you. The numbers are on the screen, 876-988-6262. 876-939-1500. Three calls before I close in seven minutes. I'll take five minutes extra today. 205 and I'll be out of air. Three calls. Protection and security is in Jesus Christ. JPS, Jesus provides security. Thank you everybody for sharing. Go to Evangelistic Center tonight. Your convention is still on. Bishop Russell at Love Lane in Maypen. Their convention is still on. Jamaica Bible Church will be on starting on Sunday. Sunday through Wednesday. Trinityville. Go by all of you wonderful people there in the St. Thomas area. We should be visiting there sometime also. Bishop P.F. Wilson, Tree Murcliff Mer Place in Clarendon. He'll be on starting on Sunday coming also. So please give your support. Pray for the men of God. Pray for the women of God. And support as much as you can with your prayer and with your potatoes. You must give to God's work, okay? We got a call from Trelawney. Anna Kay, how are you? Bless Bishop, how are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. Always listen to your program. It's very, you know, encouraging <laughs> and uplifting and so forth. Well, I thank you so much, Miss Anna Kay. Yes, yes, um, yes. What's and I'm asking you to pray for my family, my, my marriage, and my kids. And so hey, forth. marriage and family. Yes, yes, yes. All right, we certainly will pray for you. Yes, yes. What's Thank happening in Trelawney? What area of Trelawney are you? Falmouth. Falmouth? Yes. Chief Town. Yes, I really love your church. I always tune in. I'm, I tune in most Sundays. Well, thank you so much. Yes. And you must spread the word. Tell others also, okay? Yes, man, I always do. 
And we soon be coming into Falmouth Town for a, a road show. Yes, I can, yeah, I can't wait. You can't wait. You better wait. <laughs> <laughs> We did it before, we're going to do it again. Right, right. You will hear the announcement, okay? Yes, yes, we will do. Thank you, the Lord bless you. Yes, yeah, same to you, Bishop. Wonderful. What a wonderful lady, Anna K. Man, she sounds so upbeat. But you want us, want us to pray for her marriage and family? Yeah, we will do so. Two more calls, five minutes to go. We got a call from Trelawney. Who will call me from wherever? All right, so speaking of the conventions that are on this week and will be on next week, give them your support. And Sunday evening, you'll be here for the big celebration of Jamaica 60 in flying colors. Let's go to Mandeville. We've got Marcia from Mandeville. Welcome, Marcia. Good afternoon, Pastor. As I said, you have been one of my favorite pastors. If I don't listen to you every day, I don't know what would happen. Wow. Thank you for your encouraging words. I tell you, uh, from yesterday, yesterday I have, and I've listened to you this morning with the police, with the policemen, and it was so inspiring. The message was so profound. Oh God! The police, Thank God for you. The policemen. Yes, when you were doing the service this morning, I listened to that program. Okay, okay. Boy. Yes, it was very inspiring. The word I had to turn up my TV so that the community <laughs> could hear it. Oh my God! You turn it up for the community to hear. Yes, it was such an inspiring message, sermon. Where was it preached? Because I don't remember that. Yeah, man, when the police officers were, and you called up the, um, you called up the, the commissioner and prayed with him. Okay, all right, whatever it is. Thank you so much. I did, yes. I've been doing so many work over the years and so many things have been recorded, so. Yes, yes, man, that was a profound message because I didn't hear that message before. My goodness, all right. Yes, and you're looking so nice in your outfit. So I need to dress like this a little more? <laughs> Dress down Thursday? Yes, Pastor. <laughs> oh, my God. This is uh, circumstantial. And Thank you. I'm asking for prayer for me and my family and my husband for him to come back to the feet. Oh, Lord. We will do so. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much for calling. Uh, all right, Bishop. Great. <laughs> my goodness. is one of my dedicated viewers there in Mandeville, Sister Marcia. We pray for her and her family. So we got two more calls to go. And three minutes, yeah. All right, we go back to Mandeville, and we've got, we've got Nadine in Mandeville. Welcome, Nadine. Hello? 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 Are you hearing me? Hello? Yes, I'm hearing you. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. How are you? I'm doing great, thank the Lord. I am calling from Mandeville. Yes. And I'm... Um, I want to say to you, sir, that you should keep on keeping on with your God. You are doing a mighty, <laughs> mighty job. Wow. I am working in Mandeville from 2019 of December, and I'm taking care of an old lady. So because of this virus, I am unable to go for church. Yes. And I also lost my home in, by fire in 2019. And believe me, Bishop, you touched my life. Over and over. Even yesterday, I was in the hall, but I was at the fasting service with you. And you are the one keeping me focusing on God. Jesus. And you don't know what you are doing. And I just want to encourage you, sir, that the enemy will throw a dance at you. But remember, you have millions of people out here that is depending on you, including me, especially me. Even your wife, I admire her so much. You know, I am a mother of her only child, and I've been through so many things. Lost my home by fire, as I said before, and have to be living, staying where I'm living, uh, where I'm working with this lady, my daughter, and my mother of her only child. And believe me, sometimes when I feel like giving up on God, you know, it's just like you did it. Only me name you left the car. Wow. So I'm taking time out to say to you, sir, you're a mighty warrior of God. You know, I admire your principle. Even this morning, I am a member of the Shiloh Apostolic Church. Yes. And I was taught to make, but my mother, she worship at the Ocean um, Power Feet. Okay. And I was talking to one of my church sisters this morning. I was made mention, mention of you because 
she know because even yesterday she called me and she was encouraging me and I said to her, I'm listening to a church, to a fasting service. And, you know, she said to me, so yes, Sister Nadine, you always say me to that man, keep you in, in form. I remember one night, um, Bishop, I was just feel like giving up. And, you know, I turned on the television and I was watching your service. And you only let, let this record the name, you know, every word you speak, you know, it was just directing to me. And I want to say to you, sir, I don't know you in person, but I appreciate you and I thank you. And I'm asking to keep on fighting for Jesus. You know, there's a call of star waiting for you and your family. Even that though I don't know you, I pray for you that God will continue to bless your ministry. Sometimes I wonder if I wasn't so far, I would come and meet you in person and oh. let you know that I am here all because of your ministry. Thank you, Sister Nadine. God bless you. And we keep praying one for another, okay? Yes, sir. And Great. Be safe. I continue to keep up your good work. I admire your principle. You're a man of God. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, sir. Bye. All right. Let's take the final call. Emily from Kingston. Welcome, Emily. Pastor? Yep. Me can't believe something get my pastor. <laughs> you can't believe it? You know how long I try to get to your pastor? Poor me. Me calling from McIntyre Villa Ozin scheme. When you going to come up here, come have one meeting, Pastor. You know what you know what housing scheme is? Tell me where it is. <laughs> hey, all right, it's off Elliston Road. It's just top side, the police station. Okay, top I have side. A housing scheme we call it McIntyre Villa. Oh, McIntyre Villa. Yes, Sammy, I mean, why you come up here one day? How oh, you look so good today. It's what happened. So, so hold on. We never oh, look, it, we it, never it, look it, good it, all the other times. Um. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> what is a pastor? No, go ahead. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> it's what, it's what, it's what, my, 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 my uh, you, what your wife doing to you? Look how the man look good. Is it the shirt? No. It's the blessing from Almighty God. <laughs> It is a blessing from Almighty God. All right. Papa, you look good this morning. That's <laughs> mwah, mwah, Minister mwah. Davis, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Pastor, <laughs> me visit you a fasting sometime. Bless but Pastor, I'm so glad that I can't even come off of the phone. I tell you the truth. I can't come off of the phone to give nobody else a chance. Because I try, me try, me try. And what? God bless me if he gets what? you today. What? My what? Lord, what? Mr. What? The pastor, look good, my pastor, look good. Bless him. What, what are these bless time? Bless him, <laughs> for my pastor. Bless him. Hey, hey. What? 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 Yes, Lord. What Thank these... you, Jesus. What are pastor. The... Oh, you're not listening to me. All right. Health. I what, what we talk again. Thank God you. God bless and keep you. God bless and keep you. I give him someone else a chance. All right. God so bless and keep you. And I hope, uh, one of them friends that will come up and talk to you, that you can come keep me no, uh, in my community here. All right. God pray bless about the market God bless villa. you, my pastor. We'll come up You're here looking. and I'll... <laughs> We'll come up there and have a meeting with you all at McIntyre Villa, okay? Yes, we we'll want to bring the gospel mobile and have a meeting up there with you. Yes, sir. We want you up here, community. <laughs> want you up here. Uh, all Only right. you no more can come go over with them demons here. All I right. Tell you. I got Master. you. I got to go now. The people yes, want to go for the yes, lunch. Sir. Yeah, but me don't want you to go. I don't uh, want you to go. The studio people <laughs> have to go for them lunch. So let me. Yes, let me sir. Let God them. bless you. God bless. God bless. God bless. What a day! <laughs> some people crying. Some people laughing. Some people clapping. Lord have mercy. What are all those people laughing about? Are crying about? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. The spirit of laughter is a joy of the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, PFM, family, television, at home and abroad, near and far. <laughs> Pastor Joycelyn Rose, give me a call. When I call you, I can't get you. Okay. Give me a call. God bless you, everybody. Remember all our pastors and their families. Pray for them, support them, and God will bless you. Let's go. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for today's blessing. We thank you for the manner that you have sent. 
well received by all of us because it has been served by the Holy Spirit. We pray that the manna will bring salvation, bring healing, bring deliverance, bring breakthrough, bring victory. Pray for Anna Kay, her family, her marriage. Pray for Marcia, her family. Pray for Nadine. Pray for Sister Emily. In the name of Jesus, who has for prayer, we ask you to minister to them according to their needs. You have promised to supply our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So we ask you now to do so for them. Touch every person in my audience on all of the media portals, near and far. Minister to them, God. And may you be for them all that you need to be because you are more than we deserve. Thank you for hearing us now. Bless the studio. Thank you for their faithfulness in executing. Thank you for all persons. Thank you for my wife and family. Thank you for Power of Faith Ministries International. Bless us all together, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you. And here we go. Whoosh! Until we see you again. Guess what? Tomorrow be Friday? My goodness. I'll have to be sitting here again. All things go well by the help of God. So join me, spread the word, like and subscribe, share the link. And remember, ultimate security is to be found in Jesus Christ. JPS, Jesus provides security. I can't take a heart that's broken, making old. But I know a man who can I can't take